So in this little video that we're going to look at trying to create work which has been inspired by Japanese photographer Hiroshi Sujimoto. Uh, Hiroshi takes images of the, um, I think it's images of the sea and of the horizon and he quite definitively captures where the horizon line meets with the, the seascape. So today we're going to try and recreate that and what I've got is I've got a tray which is filled with probably a couple of centimetres of water and I've just got a piece of plain white paper which I've propped up in the background. Um, so what I could do initially is I could angle this, I could set my camera to a very low aperture number, so the lowest that our cameras go here is f3.5. I could put it onto manual focus, I could look through, try and line up that horizon line of water and judge how much of that um, of the paper I want to be present in it, manually focus and just snap away with a couple of pictures and experiment with this whole idea of turn it upside down because the paper's gone a little bit wavy as it's floating water. Try and capture that definitive difference that Hiroshi was able to get in his work. Put too slow on that one. However, as um, light and balance plays a very, very strong part in Hiroshi's work, what we can do as well is we can try and match the uneasy seas that he starts to capture in his work. And one of the ways in which we can do this is by grabbing some black ink and pouring a few drops into the water and starting to mix in where that goes. Put the brush, just mix it in a bit more with the water. And during the process, while it's mixing, this would be a good opportunity to try and capture some more of those images. Because it is similar in some ways to Hiroshi's work. Okay, so in editing Hiroshi's images, uh, what we're going to look at is to try and match the contrast that we can see as part of the skyline and also the ocean or the sea that we've created. Um, so I've got an image of Hiroshi's work here just as a little bit of reference um, for the editing so I can know whether what I'm doing is being successful or not. I'm just going to move that to one side for a second and just pop these in here. There we go, let's move these in here so we can see them a little bit more easily. Okay. So Hiroshi's work in this example, we have a really top, um, quite dark, almost black part of the skyline and the sea that he's captured is so bright it almost looks like it's been inverted. So that's the process I'm going to follow for looking at my example. I'm going to pull up this one first of all and this is going to be the first one that I use. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this in quite closely. I'm going to remove parts of the side of the bucket that we can see. Um, maybe even this section here where we can see the light um, from the sky showing down. And I'm just going to drag it down slightly so we don't have as much of the sky. Okay, alright, so let's try the saturating. Okay, so if I were to look at the two of them, obviously we still have to look at darkening a lot more of the image, particularly the top. And so there we go, that's what I'm looking at and I need to maybe look at inverting part of the bottom here. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to tilt this slightly so we have a bit more of a definitive horizon line which is running across. Um, okay, I am going to use the magic wand tool to select all of the background area. I'm going to feather my selection which means it's going to be a bit more generous in the area around it, a bit smoother. I'm going to apply feather of 10. So there we go, so we've got a much smoother area selected there. Let me see, can I add this area as well? No, okay, all right, so that's frustrating. So right, let's just increase the tolerance slightly to 25. Okay, that's pretty much better. Go back, feather, 10, okay, cool, okay. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to go to levels. I'm gonna make this part of the skyline look much, much darker by dragging all of our lines down. Mm 
really pull down these output levels so it looks like we have a much darker skyline than we do and we've kind of lost that texture effect which is good because that's not really something we want present in our work. Okay, we have a couple of little bits here which have been missed off which is a bit frustrating. Um, so with that selection that we have now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the inverse. So it's going to select the part of the C down here. What we can try to do is we can try and invert the colours as an initial pass through and we can see by inverting the colours we get something which is looking a little bit closer to his work. Um, however maybe I want from this to be able to see some of the tones a bit more so what I might do is just again drag the darks down slightly so we have some more mid-tones present in part of the work. Looking at these two kind of side by side together, let's see if we can pull them up. Okay, so I've still got some way to go. Um, I can look at maybe smoothing this line out a little bit more. Maybe in order to do that, what I could do is choose to take a selection of this guy here.